Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be doing my September wrap up. <laughs> I read a total of seven books in September with five of them being physical copies and two of them being ebooks. I'm happy with what I read in September, they range between three and five stars and although I wanted to read eight books because I said to myself if I read eight books in September, October, November and December of 2020 I'll reach 100 books in the year which is a goal I never thought I'd achieve. So although I didn't reach eight books I'm still really really happy with the seven books I did read so without further ado uh, let's hop into the first book that I read in September. The first book I picked up in September was Radio Silence by Alice Oldsman. Now this was actually quite a disappointment for me. I rated it a three stars. It wasn't like the worst book I've read of 2020 but it definitely was quite a disappointment. I find Alice Oldsman a very hit or miss author for me. I absolutely adore anything that she writes surrounding Nick and Charlie but when it comes to her other novels I struggle to enjoy them and see the hype surrounding them such as Radio Silence. It just didn't do it for me. If you didn't know this book centers around a girl called Frances who is like top of her class and she does really really well in school and she's getting ready to sit her last school exam so she can go off to university but one of her massive hobbies is drawing fan fiction for a web podcast that she listens to avidly however this web podcast creator is anonymous and no one knows like who who they are what they do where they are like they're completely anonymous but she still has this really big Tumblr following. She creates fan fiction and fan art for this podcast. And this is like her like side hobby when she isn't doing schoolwork. So then when Alid comes into play in this story, she kind of forgets about her school and the grades that she worked hard towards and things start to develop. It's basically just like a character discovery book and it didn't really do it for me. It's not that memorable. I don't kind of remember too much about it apart from that I was disappointed in it. I enjoy Alice Osman's writing. I think her writing is really well done but I just don't tend to enjoy her characters or her stories or her plots when it comes to books outside of the Nick and Charlie universe as such. So yeah, it was a disappointment for me. I gave it a three stars. I kind of know a lot of people love this book so I'm really, really sorry if I've offended you but it's just me. It's <laughs> then the second book we read in September was to try and boost myself up after having kind of a disappointing read with Radio Silence and that was to reread one of my favourite books of 2020 so far with All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This is a YA memoir non-fiction book surrounding George M. Johnson's life and how he's grown up in a queer black minority community and it's just so impacting, so empowering. I originally first read this book back in June or July as an audiobook on Scribd and fell head over heels with the story and the way George M. Johnson narrated his own story and the way he managed to make me feel. I just, I fell in love with it. So I had to get a physical copy and then as soon as I got this physical copy, I was on a mission to reread it so I could tap it all up and make it all pretty. And I'm so, so glad I gave it a reread because I feel like I got a lot more out of it reading the words physically than listening to it because I do tend to zone out sometimes in audiobooks and miss some things. So very grateful to have the physical copy and to have tabbed it all up with all my favourite things, all the things that made me angry, all the things that made me sad, all the things that I think were really, really impacting and powering on me. So yeah. Highly, highly recommend this book if you haven't checked it out already. This is definitely one of my favourite books of the year, if not my favourite book of the year. And obviously I gave it a five stars. And then the next book I picked up and read alongside All Boys Aren't Blue was Get A Life Chloe Brown, which was another disappointment for me. I had a high expectations for this book going into it. It is one of my five star predictions in my five star prediction video. I'll link it up above and down below for you guys if you wanna go check out my other five star predictions. But this was one of them and it wasn't a five stars. It kind of disappointed me, unfortunately. This is basically about a character called Chloe Brown who has a chronic illness and she has a near miss with death. So from then on, she creates a list to help herself get a life because she's kind of been shut away from her friends and family and the life that she had before she was diagnosed with this illness. So she creates this list like have amazing sex, ride a motorbike, do adventures, all this sort of stuff. Like it's very bucket list trope style book. Um, and that's kind of where she meets this other character, Red who she kind of like falls for, it's an adult romance, you can kind of assume the rest of the story, but 
it just didn't do it for me. I didn't really connect with Chloe, the main character. I didn't really care for the plot. I think I vibed with Talia, Talia Hibbert's writing style either. The only kind of redeeming things it had for me is that I was really intrigued by Red's storyline. It has some trigger warnings, so please be aware of that before you go into it if you are interested in picking this up and you haven't yet. Um, but I was really intrigued by Red's backstory and the character arc that Talia Hibbert kind of created for him. I thought was really, really well done and interesting. And, and that's kind of what kept me going and what pushed me through to the end. Otherwise, I think it probably would have been a DNF. There were some characters in there and, and some side plots in this book that I just think were so irrelevant and had nothing to add to the story. I just, for me, it was a very average read and I've definitely read better adult romance contemporary books out there and I don't get the hype of this one. I have a whole reading vlog called Worth the Hype? Question mark. So I'll link that up above and down below for you guys as well. But for me, it just didn't do it and I gave it a three stars. Next book I picked up was Internment by Samir Hamed. This is actually kind of a reread for me. I got about 100 pages into this book last year, but decided to put it down, not as a DNF, but just because I knew that I could get a lot out of this book, but I didn't feel in the mood to read it. So it was definitely a it's me, not you kind of scenario when I put this book down last year. And so, so grateful that I decided to do that and re-pick up this year when I was more in the mood for this type of book. This basically follows Leia, who's Muslim, and with a near futuristic dystopian set America, her family get put into an internment camp for being Muslim and it's basically about her fight for what's right and to try and get out of this camp. She meets people along the way with the same thoughts of her and they kind of start a rebellion and it's just a really really empowering impactful story kind of scaring you into how close this could be our future and how to prevent it and not allow this to happen to marginalized communities and Leia was a really, really strong female character. I really enjoyed her character arc and how strong she was throughout her situations and the things that she got put through. It's just a really, really well written story and it was definitely a page turner. I couldn't put this book down and I gave it a four star. I highly, highly recommend you pick this book up if you're interested in kind of like a YA rebellion sort of style book. I was looking at the back of this book before this wrap up and I think the author kind of has a Star Wars kind of inspiration for this book because the tagline is rebellions are built on hope and obviously the main character is Leia so whether Samir Hamed kind of made it Star Wars related or not I don't know but I definitely kind of get that sort of vibe and like the two sides kind of fighting the right and the wrong kind of of this storyline and I really really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it I definitely think it's an underhyped book on booktube I gave it a four stars and the next book I picked up was an audiobook and that was About a Girl by Lindsay Kelk. I'm trying to read through all of Lindsay Kelk's backlist of books and this was one of her very early published works. I did enjoy it. It's basically about a character called Tess who lives with a flatmate called Vanessa and Vanessa is kind of like a very snobby, uptight, very self-absorbed character and she doesn't really take her life too seriously because she kind of feeds off daddy's money and so when her manager gets her a photography job because she's a photographer in Hawaii she kind of doesn't go and just ignores her manager so when her manager calls her cell phone one day and Vanessa isn't there to answer it Tess our main character is and she pretends to be Vanessa and she goes on this photography trip to Hawaii Tess has a hobby for photography but has never really explored what it could be as a living and this trip kind of allows her to explore that idea as before she leaves for Hawaii she gets made redundant so she hasn't really got anything to lose so she kind of just wings it and goes on this photography trip to Hawaii meets some really fun characters and just kind of discovers herself and it was a good book it was enjoyable I actually really hated the narrator as I listened to this as an audiobook. The narrator for Tess was actually really nice. I enjoyed her voice, but as soon as the narrator starts to do multiple different voices and try and distinguish the voices of the side characters, that's where I really didn't enjoy the audiobook. Her other voices were so annoying. Vanessa's voice in particular was so high pitched, so shrieky. I just, yeah. If it wasn't for the story and the fact I wanted to discover out what happened to Tess in the end, I think I would have given up on it because the audiobook was quite painful to listen to, let's say that at the least. Um, I gave this book overall a three stars. So it was a fun book. I, it's actually a trilogy and I'm not sure whether I'll continue with it. We shall see, but yeah, a good fun read. It just felt very Lindsay Kelk. I've read her I Heart series and 
it was definitely along the same sort of vibe. Lindsay Kelk's I Heart series, the first one, I Heart New York, is about a character called Angela who finds out her husband cheats on her, so she just leaves London and goes and to and goes to live in New York by herself, knowing no one, to just try and restart her life. About a girl is about Tess, who's just been made redundant and goes off to Hawaii to try and rediscover herself. They're very, very similar plot lines. It felt very Lindsay Kelk in the writing and the humour. So one or the other, I would pick the I Heart series, but I'm trying to get, like I said, through Lindsay Kelk's backlist. And it was a fun, enjoyable read, but not one to remember for years to come. The next book I read on Scribd as an ebook was Open Road Summer by Emery Lord. I read The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord last month and really, really enjoyed it. I gave it a four stars. So I wanted to pick up more of Emery Lord's books. So I decided to pick up Open Road Summer as it was an ebook on Scribd. And I really, really enjoyed this book as well. This book is about a main character called Reagan, who when her parents get divorced, she kind of goes off the rails a little bit. She gets into some trouble and she's kind of losing her path in life. So when her best friend, who's a famous country singer and is going on her summer tour, Reagan decides to go along on it to try and get away from what's happening in her life and just kind of escape and enjoy a summer with her best friend. And I really, really enjoyed the settings in this book. I am a massive country fan. So having a whole book based around a country summer tour was incredible. It was so, so good. And you meet other artists along the way. You go across America, you go to Nashville, you go to LA. Like the whole scenery and the settings of this book, I really, really enjoyed. And I really, really enjoyed the character arc of Reagan. I think she started off as someone who was a little bit broken. And although she wasn't perfectly fixed by the end, I really enjoyed her character development in this book. I just think it's a cute summer contemporary book about two best friends who kind of just have a great summer, really. It's not anything special, it's nothing amazing, but it was really, really fun to read. I definitely think me being a country fan myself heightened my experience of this book, and overall I really enjoyed it and I gave it a four stars. I just really enjoy Emery Lord's writing style. I definitely think it's a writing style that I vibe with and I get a lot out of. So I've now read The Start of Me and You, When We Collide, and Open Road Summer. So I think the only novel I have left, which is already published by Emery Lord, is The Names We Gave Us. So I definitely want that book to be on my TBR soon. I'm very, very excited to get to that one. And then I would have read all of Emery Lord's books, which is very exciting. The last and seventh book I read in September was my favourite book of the month, hands down. The Love Square by Laura Jane Williams. Oh. I just adored this book so, so much. Laura Jane Williams had a lot to live up to because I adored Our Stop by Laura Jane Williams that I read at the beginning of the year. So when she had a new book released in June, I was so eager to get to it, but I kind of put it off a few months because I was apprehensive. I didn't want it to be a letdown, but it didn't let me down. It didn't disappoint me. It was, it was so good. I enjoyed it so much. This book, if you didn't know, or you can guess from the title, The Love Square, is about a main character called Penny, who is kind of really struggling with love, and it's the only area of her life that she kind of, she's not doing well in. Like, she has a restaurant, she's opened a cafe in London, like, that's doing well, she's kind of exceeding in her career, but love is really a struggle for her. And then one character enters her life, and she kind of feels for him. They have, like, a cute little romance. And then another character walks into her life and and then another one walks into her life and then she has the pick between three guys who take an interest in her and because this has never happened in her life before she's kind of figuring out what to do, who to go with, all these sorts of things and that kind of sounds like like not a great plot line but Laura Jane Williams writes this book so well there's no miscommunication there's no horrible love triangle trope it's just done so so well and it's more than just romance it's about family and love and I just really enjoyed this book there are some trigger warnings such as cancer in this book so just please be aware of that before you go into it there are some great, however, representation in this book. There's a lesbian couple, there's a gay couple, there's a non-binary, and there is a non-mondrogonous, the per a person who doesn't believe that there's only one person out there for them and kind of just doesn't really believe in marriage. I think that representation was done so, so well and I really enjoyed learning more about how other people view love. It was written about so, so well. 
So if you're looking for like an LGBTQIA plus book, I highly recommend this one. There's a lot of great representation. Obviously I'm not on voices, but for me, I think it was done really well. I knew from our stop that I was gonna instantly fall in love with all these characters and I did from the first page. Penny was such a good main character. She was a little indecisive here and there, but the other characters put her in her place and I don't think that it was done in a bad way. I think that she learned, Penny learned a lot through what she went through in this book and definitely came out a stronger main character. And it was just overall a really, really good book. I love Laura Jane Williams writing style. Her character always are impeccable and it's just a great book and I gave it five stars. I couldn't fault it. I, on my Goodreads review, I do, obviously do good read reviews so if you're not following me on goodreads and i highly recommend so it's always linked down below for you guys i put in my what i didn't enjoy about this book i put in brackets this is me just nitpicking because i adored this book from the minute i started it right to the end um <laughs> so i the nitpicking things i did was obviously there are three main love interests and although i preferred two over the all three of them together. They are all so individual and they felt like individual people. They all had their own storylines. They all had their own backgrounds. None of them felt the same, which I think was really, really well done on Laura Jane Williams' heart part. Although the ending of this book was amazing, I do think that it could have been a little less cliche in the fact that obviously it's being a romance, she ends up with one of them. You can kind of predict that from the beginning, but I think it would have been really cool to have shown the readers that love doesn't fix everything and that Penny is a strong female character in herself and that she could have ended the book by herself just living her own life in her cafe with other things that have happened in her in the story that leads up to the ending so I think that it could have ended in a different way that could have been just as strong although I love the ending I'm just kind of suggesting a different ending although that's never going to happen I think it would have been cool to show readers that characters can end up by themselves and be just as happy in a romance so yeah those are kind of my really nitpicky things about this book but I absolutely adored it and I gave it a five stars definitely Laura Jane Williams has become one of my favorite authors because I've read both of her books this year and absolutely loved both of them gave both of them five stars I highly recommend you go check her out if you're if you're a contemporary romance lover like myself, sh you can't miss her books. They're, they're too incredible to miss out on. So I highly go, highly recommend you go pick them up. Blah, 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 blah. And that, of all that rambling, is the seven books I read in September. So, so happy with the reading I did in September, although I kind of wished I'd got to eight books. No need to worry because I'm already on my second book of October and it's only the fourth. So I have a feeling I could read nine books and catch up with my Goodreads goal in October, which is very, very exciting. Without further ado, I'll just kind of leave you to it. Let's chat in the comments. What books did you read in September? Did we read any of the same ones? What are your thoughts on them? If you've read any of them, that is. What's your favorite book you read in September? I would love to know, and maybe it can be added to my TBR because I'm always adding books to my TBR. Who isn't? Let's face it. So yeah, without further ado, I'll leave you to it on this rainy, drizzly Sunday afternoon. And if you like what you saw and like what you heard, please be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.